praise the Lord. Let's stand tonight and close out prayer. Amen. Special prayer request uh, to please keep uh, Sister Yoshiko in prayer. Sister Bowser took her to the hospital because she had a fever um, this afternoon, this evening. So let's just please keep Sister Yoshiko in our prayers. Amen. Believe God for healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, <clears throat> of course, for Sister Marsh for continued recovery. Amen. Um, God has really uh, done a mighty work in her. Um, and she is recovering much quicker than in times past. So we thank God for that. I keep telling her, you better take it slow. Just because you feel better, then you got to still take it slow. So just continue prayer for Sister Marsh and was pastor. He's at General Conference. Amen. Uh, we should hear tomorrow um, if they got I Am Global. So Lord's will be done. Amen. Um, it was an awesome service. If you have a chance, go back and listen to that message about fruit of the vine. It was it was awesome. It was timely. Amen. Amen. But we're just going to believe that what God is going to do for the rest of General Conference over the next couple of days. Amen. And uh, just pray for pastor strength. Um, he's got lots of meetings and stuff because everybody from the headquarters is there. Plus, he's running the ta his table of selling things. So, and without, you know, Sister Marsh. So, just keep him in prayer for strength. Um, I get, I think what uh, he got back to the condo he's staying at like after like one o'clock in the morning because the service just went, went, went. So, and he's got to be up really early for a meeting. So just prayer for strength for his body. And then after general conference, he'll be driving back to Texas because he's got services uh, in the Texas, more in the Southern Texas district and, and everything like that. So in Jesus name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Jesus, I thank you, Lord God for tonight, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, oh God, to come into your house, oh Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness and for your goodness, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Sister Yoshiko, Lord. We're asking that you would touch her right now in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, you would cause that fever to dissipate in the name of Jesus and bring complete healing to her body, oh God. Touch Sister Bowser, God. Touch her spirit, God. Give her peace that passes understanding, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, oh God, for your healing, working power, oh God, that's going to touch Sister Yoshiko, oh Lord. It's going to be a testimony and a witness, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Lord, continue to pray. We ask for, for prayer for Sister Marsh, God, for continued healing, oh God, in her body and recovery from surgery. Thank you for the strength, God, that she has been feeling, oh God. But Lord, let there be complete healing, oh God, in the name of Jesus and strength return. Lord, we ask that you would touch Pastor Marsh, oh God, that you would continue to strengthen him. Lord, while he's on the road, oh God, for giving rest, give him rest in his body, oh God, and all the things that, the meetings and things that he'll be involved in over the next few days, God. Lord, we know that you can keep him and keep him, Lord, as he start, travels back, Lord, to be on the deputation road, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your hand that's been upon him. We ask for your will to be done, oh God, if they're going to get I Am Global. We're trusting and believing you, God, that, Lord, you hold, you're holding them in your hands, oh God, and, Lord, your perfect will is going to be done. Have your way in this service tonight. Touch those who are watching online, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, God, touch, Lord, the Sister Stagel and her Bible study that she's having, oh God, and the uh, Sister Jenkins, Sister Hines, oh God, there at Iwakuni, Lord, and, and Brother Quran and APCS, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the work work that you're doing, oh God, Lord, upon these military bases, Lord, in the name of Jesus, have your way, oh God, tonight. Lord, God, be glorified and magnified in this place, Lord. God, let there be revelation and understanding as we go and get into your word, oh Lord God, that we may know you, God, that we may know you better, Lord, and that we may grow thereby. And oh Lord, as we sing worship unto you tonight, God, receive it, God, as a sweet-smelling sacrifice unto you, God, because you're worthy of our praise and the glory and the honor. And Lord, we just magnify you tonight and want you to have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for how you're moving, God, even when we can't see it yet, God. Lord, we believe your report. We believe, God, what you're doing, oh God. The promises and the words that you've spoken, God. We're thanking you, God, for the seeds, God, that are going to bring forth fruit that have been planted in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. God, continue to have your way. Oh, Lord, let show yourself strong, God. Make yourself known. God, touch the victims of Hurricane Ian, oh 
oh God. The many that have been displaced and lost their homes and family, God, touch them tonight, God. Use a church, oh God, that is in the surrounding areas, oh God, to minister, God, to these communities, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, to be a help, oh God, and a blessing, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. But God, bring comfort, God, provision, oh God, to these families, oh Lord, who have lost their, their homes and everything and family, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, this is an opportunity, oh God, for them to know that there is a God in heaven, oh hallelujah. You are our hope and our anchor, oh God, the refuge that we can run into because you're a strong tower, oh hallelujah. Thank you, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. Have your way, God, tonight in this service. And Lord, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> So for tonight's scripture share, I'm pulling it from Ezekiel uh, chapter 36. Um, Hallelujah. Oh, here we are. Uh, verses 18 to 23. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Amen. So I was reading this. I thought it was interesting to read about the children of Israel who were doing wrong. Again. <laughs> doing wrong and God basically kicked them out of the land. And I thought, wow, they had the audacity, too, to complain to the people around them that, you know, they're out of their land, they don't have their own land, now they're with all these other people, you know, they're probably grumbling and complaining. But they were the ones that wronged God first. But God said, because you are profaning my name, fine, you're going to come back. But this is not for your sake. This is for my name's sake. It struck me, you know, what we say affects others' perspectives. And we have to be careful <laughs> what we say. I know sometimes God calls us to be patient. So in patience, we can't be grumbling and complaining to the people around us. We're like, oh, why hasn't this happened yet? Oh, it's taking forever. Da, 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 you know and our attitudes and stuff, how it affects, because it affects their view of God. Because they're watching us to see, you know, who is this God that they're talking about? It's like, well, they believe in Jesus, but they're over here complaining all the time, being a negative Nancy or a Debbie Downer. And, you know, we, we have to be careful. And I thought about that. You know, I don't want, I don't want to do that to Jesus. <laughs> I want to always welcome him i want to be yeah sure i'm going through that i was like but i'm okay <laughs> like it's okay i'm okay because god's got me always have a big smile on my face tell everyone so that they can be like you know 
you're going through all this. How can you smile? <laughs> How can you still be in this good mood? This happened to you. It's like, yeah, but I mean, God's got it. So I'm all good. So I just wanted to share that with you tonight. God laid it in my heart. So praise the Lord. He's always there for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so good. And we just want to welcome in, him in this place tonight. Praise and worship.
Hallelujah. 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 He's righteous. He's glorious. He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight unless you have a testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God for healing Miko and removing that cancer. I Scott called me today for work on Teams, and I was like, what are you doing? You know, she just had surgery Friday. He said she's home and running around, and Japanese doctors do not do that. You know, they, they keep you in for a week or two, and just praise the Lord. You know, and she, he's like, yeah, she's doing great. <laughs> you know, it's what a wonderful God we serve. And and I just, I look around at my work and there's a couple of people we've all prayed for, you know. And I'm like, Mike, today I tried to get him to let me give his family a Bible study. And he always, you know, I don't need that, you know. And I go, one of these days he's going to go, okay. Because that's what happened to me, you know. My sister kept asking and asking, and I broke down one day and said, "Okay, I want a Bible study," you know. But praise, praise God for an answering, a prayer answering God, and answering our prayers, reaping where we didn't even sow. Sometimes, you know, it's like it, God is good. Amen. Amen. I just want to praise the Lord. Amen. And give him all the glory and honor. Um, I was listening to the the conf general conference message this morning um, with, uh, um, I think it was Brother Urshan. I'm not sure which Urshan, where he falls in the line. But um, he was he was talking. He said so many awesome things. Um God was really in that message, but he, he talked about, um, I don't even know what book it's in, but where, uh, how the canker worm has, has, how's it go? How, how's that scripture go? The canker worm and the locust have, have, he's going to restore what they've taken. And he talked about restoring the years Amen. That the locust and the canker worm has taken and eaten away. And there's years of my life, amen, that I know I didn't live right. I know I didn't live for God the way I should have been. I know there were things in my life that that were that were affecting people around me, amen. But but now I can I can see the the promise in that scripture, amen. I can see it. Every day, amen, there's things that happen, amen. Every day, every week, every service, every time I get to speak to somebody about God, amen. He's restoring those years, amen. There's there's times that I, I said it when I first got here that that there was a smell, amen, that I remember from the church I got saved in, the church I received the Holy There was an there's just a an essence of of a memory, amen. And and it happened again tonight, amen. And I just I just give God the glory, amen, because he is so faithful. He's he's so forgiving. Amen. He's so patient and compassionate with who we are, amen, with our frailties and our infirmities and our and our weaknesses, amen. He he brings us out of that and he sets us on a place, amen. And when we're available, praise God. He uses us. Amen. I heard an analogy this week about sports. And there's people in football who get injured. And, you know, they're great players. They have great talent. But they have this habit of getting injured for whatever reason. Some people just aren't built to, to take that kind of punishment. But others who may not be quite as talented, but are always there. They're always available. They're always 
even though they may get hit, they may get knocked down, they're still in the place where they need to be, amen. And I just praise God for that life, amen, to be able to be in the place where he can use us and, 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 and touch other people's lives to help them. Amen. All right. One other thing. My sister let us know today, DeYoung, that she had no more cancer markers again today. So I think they get it done and she had a CAT scan and it came back negative as well. So Hallelujah. praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God is so awesome. He is so awesome and he is doing awesome and mighty things. Amen. But that faithfulness of God, man, it runs deep. <laughs> it runs deep. It runs deep. And that's why every day, you know, a new his mercies are new every morning. And that is something to be so thankful about. They're new every morning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember this evening, it was kind of a weird rain over here. It was raining on one side of the church and then all of a sudden it was raining on the other side so on one side of the building it was raining and on the other side it wasn't but then it started pouring all over the church but as the sun was setting and i just kind of had looked out of the door window and just again reminded of the majesty of god how awesome and wonderful he is that even in the smallest simplest things it's like wow wow that's just all you can say sometimes is, wow. <laughs> wow, Lord. Wow. <laughs> Amen. And that's what we're trying to tell other people. That's what we're trying to show them, the wow factor of what it means to live for God. It's not like people suppose, you know, they were like, what do these people do? And what are they drunk? Nine o'clock in the morning. You just don't understand. It's the wow factor of God. He has filled us with this new wine, this living water. Amen. That satisfies and quenches our thirst. And I am so thankful for that tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. But for a few moments, let's get into the word tonight. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for where God is taking us. Because it's, it's, it's such a clear, a very clear place that he's trying to take us to. And I'm thankful for that. And... As the Lord continues to reveal and show us how we're going to advance the kingdom, amen, I'm excited. I'm going to give you a little heads up, but as we kind of get more into this, the Lord's kind of already put on my heart the next two uh, areas that we're going to be going into when it comes to advancing his kingdom, and one of those is unity. And it was so awesome listening to Brother Joel Urshan's message. You know, I remember him as a teenager because I, the church we were born into He's married. He was married to our pastor's daughter. So he used to come over all the time to Germany when their daughter, when they were young, before they had kids and stuff. And he'd come and preach and minister. So I remember him as a teenager growing up, hearing him speak and, and, and everything. And of course, now he's a grandfather and all those kinds of stuff. So but just, you know, when he was talking today about the fruit of the vine and the church and the unity we need to have, because it's like the anointing and the character of God that needs to flow so that the gifts can flow. I was just like, wow, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you're just you're speaking the same thing everywhere. You're speaking the same thing. God, you're trying to take the church somewhere in these last days. Pastor, I was talking to him briefly before he went to bed at one o'clock in the morning. His time, he was saying that there is a new a brand new missionary to a country that has never had a church. A couple a missionary couple is getting ready to land into a country that has never had an apostolic work. And I'm like, Lord, you're coming back. He's coming back, you know, he's making us ready. He's preparing the church. Amen. But yes, Lord, we've got to get on the same page. Lord, we, we've got to walk in the character so that the unity and the power of God can flow. Amen. So that we can make him known because that's the point. He's got to be made known. And so I'm excited about what God is doing. And so in the next, in the next, whenever the Lord releases me, we're going to talk some about unity. And then we're going to be talking about bearing fruit. And so when I heard the title of his message, I was kind of like floored. I was like, wow, Lord. I mean, just you're just hitting it, Lord. Just hitting it exactly where we need to go. Bearing more fruit. 
Amen. He says we are part of the vine. Amen. And he's called, ordained us and called us to bear fruit and that the fruit remain. Oh, hallelujah. That's even more encouraging, not to just bear any kind of fruit that withers away, but that it remain. Hallelujah. That's where we're headed to. That's where we're headed to. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, we're going to start in uh, Hebrews chapter 5 tonight. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read the Passion Translation. For every spiritual infant who lives on milk is not yet pierced by the revelation of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, whose spiritual senses perceive heavenly matters. And they have been trained by what they've experienced to emerge with understanding of the difference between what is truly excellent and what is evil and harmful. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So again, we're talking about deception, motives, being prepared as God people, as God's people, the understa understanding what it means to move from the babe to the fully mature. But I like how the Passion Translation kind of opens up our understanding through the words and saying that someone who's a spiritual infant is not yet pierced by the revelation of righteousness. Now, there's a little note in the Passion Translation that says in the Aramaic translation, it means that they are unversed in the language or manifestation of righteousness. Wow. Okay. It, 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 it kind of, for me, like the way my mind works, it puts it together. All right. If they don't know how to manifest the righteousness of God, there's still infancy. There's still a mindset of infancy there, not being on spiritual milk. That's why everything that we're learning has to move to the point of application, the manifestation of the principles of God. This is the evidence that we're growing, maturing, amen, that God is changing and transforming us, amen. We're getting ready to come to the end of the year, another time where we're going to be taking communion again and reflecting on 2022, by the time we get to December 31st, 2022, when you look back on this past year, can you see how you've grown? Can you see the change? Or are we still the same? Amen. I pray that we are being changed and ever transformed so that when January 1st, 2023 hits, hallelujah, we can move into the next thing that God has for us. And we don't have to go back and keep going over some of those other things where God's saying, yes, move forward, advance the kingdom. Now it goes on and says those who are on solid food is for the mature, whose spiritual senses perceive. Now this word perceive means to attain awareness or understanding of, to become aware of through the senses. Now he's saying spiritual senses perceive heavenly matters. There's an increased understanding and awareness of spiritual things. Oh, hallelujah. And that's part of our growth where more and more spiritual things, God is bringing understanding and revelation. That's why we have to continue to grow and pray and seek God for revelation and understanding. That's why every year I read the Bible through and man, there's something new that God's just like, whew, he brings new revelation to, new understanding to. And then, wow, it takes my relationship to a whole new level of living because now I understand God in a greater way. I understand a little bit more of who he is and what I am called to be. That is the that gives us the power to walk in confidence in him. So many times people in the church can feel inadequate and like, well, I don't know this. Da, da, da. Well, when the more we know God, it gives us confidence. It allows us to walk in a boldness that we did not have before. I love Daniel. Pastor was quoting this a lot over the last two years, but I think it's the Daniel 1132. Daniel says, they that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Can't get me any more simple than that. He tells you how to get strong and do exploits for God. Know him. Know him. So I got to know him better today than I did yesterday. That means when I go through trials, Lord, what are you teaching me? What are you showing me through that, God? What are you showing me about myself? What are you showing me about who you are? What are you showing me about how I need to respond, God, I, so that I know you a little bit better, so that the next time around, I'm even stronger. Oh, hallelujah. Where before we would kind of be like, yeah, you know, 
you know, kind of like, like, you know, hesitant with the enemy where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you want to get in my face? Come on. <laughs> you know, we have to have that kind of confidence and boldness, but it only comes by knowing God better and knowing who we are in God and how he's calling us, what, how he's calling us to walk and live out the things of God. Now, it goes on to say they have been trained. I love this because, again, it uses words that we are we are, we know we understand we have a, 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 a we can think of an example training. We're trained on the job. We're trained in this. We're trained in that. We can understand that. You know what? Yeah, you got to do. You watch somebody do it. Then you do it in re repetition, and then you can do it on your own. We understand that we're training. So in the things of God and spiritual matters, we are, we're trained. Every day, it's training. Every day, we get up and we go through life with the Holy Ghost. God is training us for what we're going. what's going to come. He's training us. You know, he's like, okay, let's do a little sparring match. Okay, now let's do, let's do some little jump rope and go, okay, now let's go now and do this. And he's training us, building our spiritual muscles so that we can, we can have awareness and understanding of spiritual things. Because again, you know, in the whole years of uh, uh, spiritual deception, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting with what we see. We're not going fisticuffs with, with the person on the job. Like, okay, come on, I'll meet you out in the parking lot. You know, throw it on your jacket. Come here, let, let, let's work it out. It's, that's not the kind of fight we're fighting. We're fighting spiritually because they have a monkey on their back, so to speak, and they don't know it. And God's called us to win the fight. Hallelujah. Spiritually, to tear down the strongholds. Oh, hallelujah. The things that are binding and chaining people, they don't even realize. We are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy who's after the souls of men. So we got to be trained. With endurance, Amen, Amen. What what what's good in a fight if you if you only, if you can only get in one punch, you're going to get knocked out. <laughs> but see, God's training us every day, and we build that endurance as a, we endure hardness, as the Bible says, as a good soldier. Pastor Parker used to love to quote that scripture. Number one, you know, it's very fitting in a military church because they understand that idea of a soldier. And you know what? As a soldier, you got to endure hardness. That's one of those attributes. And so, endure hardness as a good soldier. The Bible says. Amen. Sometimes it's building that endurance, get that thick skin, that tough skin, because you know what? You don't know who you're going to deal with. You don't know who's going to get on your nerves. You don't know what spirit you're going to come up against. You don't know what situation is going to come your way, but you're enduring. You're getting that training that gives you that endurance to say, okay, uh-uh, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to keep on keeping on. No matter what come my way, rain, sleet, snow, hail, it can come at me. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going because the Lord has trained me and I've learned to exercise the spiritual senses to know how to fight and to walk this walk with God. Because you know what? The race is not to the swift. It's to he that endures to the end. And these days, you know, people don't want to put too much amount of time in anything. They want it to be very quick. I mean, look at phones. You know, we started out with, you know, no G. Then you got 3G. Now you got 4G. And then now you got 5G. You know, and I remember I was like, man, my 4G is getting slow. I want 5G now. <laughs> Like, you know, we're so used to, I mean, like, man, when you, when the browser takes like a few minutes to kind of eat, we're like, okay, all right, what's wrong? Is the internet signal? Do we need to reset the modem? Like, you know, we get all like, oh, how come it's not fast? You know, all the, all the, all the, all the, the people who born, who didn't know about the, you know, you know, just to connect to the internet, you know, praise God. They don't know those, though, that, that burden of waiting half an hour just to connect in. And then you get a phone call. Oh man, you kicked me out the internet. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> but see, we, we live in this fast paced, give it to me now world, but in the things of God, sometimes it's quick and sometimes it ain't. <laughs> sometimes it's the day in and the day out. Amen. But he's training us. Why? So that what we've experienced we emerge with a greater understanding of the difference between what is excellent and what is evil and harmful. That's maturity. Think of a kid. They don't know when they're young. Don't put a, with your hand on the hot stove, right? When you're a kid, don't put your hand in the fan while it's turning. I did that. <laughs> but you, you don't know, right? You don't know what's harmful, what's good. So your parents kind of guide you and tell you, hey, no, don't do that. No, be careful. But then as you get older, you you have an understanding now of what's evil, what's harmful. And so you know what to stay away from, what to do, what not to do. But see, there even even in that, there is a way of, you know, smoking, for example. They put on the carton, you're going to get cancer and carcinogens and da, 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 da. And yet how many people smoke every day? 
So yet they're adults, but yet they're choosing to do something that's harmful. You think, hello, maturity says, why would you do that? Because, well, I'm an adult, and if I want to get cancer, I'm going to get cancer. But, you know. And so you got those chain smokers and stuff. Sister Michaela and I were talking about, she was talking about this one lady who's in the checkout line, and she has the, the trach in her, you know, and she's still buying, a, you know, 10 cartons and stuff. Like, I mean, come on. You want your face to fall off before you, you get the clue? <laughs> but see, sometimes even as adults, we can do things because, well, like, I just want to do it. But yet it's harmful. We, we haven't yet connected the dots that, you know what, uh, it's, not, it's probably not so good for me. You know, bad habit, so to speak. Oh, man, you know, that's a bad habit. I need to kick that habit. And we all can think of things that, you know, yeah, I got to kick that bad habit. And sometimes it's a matter of because, well, I'm an adult and I can do it and I want to do it. Who cares about the consequences? People do that every day. I'm just going to live in the moment. I'm going to do what feels right to me. And then later they're like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But see, spiritually, God is trying to help us so that we can discern more and more. Because as we get closer and closer to the coming of the Lord, Pastor and I were talking about this just over the last couple of days, the subtlety of sin is going to get more insidious and it's going to get more deceptive. (laughs) I read a news article. I didn't even dignify reading the whole article, but I read the headline and it said this. They did a study. Scientists just recently did a study. And in the study, they said that the people who are at risk, more at risk for dementia are those who don't drink alcohol. I thought, drop the mic right there. Like the world, like if, if, if you didn't like, without the Holy Ghost, you'd be like, whoa. So you know what, I need to drink me a little bit of alcohol so I don't get dementia. But see, in the spirit, the Holy Ghost is like, wow, look at the deception in that. Look at the, the subversive way that they're trying to make alcohol appealing because look, you won't get dementia. And it was like, that's a lie from hell. Oh my God, really? (laughs) And someone is going to read that article and think, you know, I'm going to drink some more alcohol. And now Satan has got them bound and addicted to alcohol, which is just going to kill their liver and give them cirrhosis. And then they're going to die anyway. Who cares if you got dementia when your your insides are rotting and out? I'm thinking, wow, wow, Lord, the deception, the subtlety. And that's what's going to keep happening. The world is saying, well, evil is good, and we're going to package it in such a way where you're going to be like, wow, you know, maybe, maybe. I'd like to know. I, I, I honestly, I would love to know how many people saw that and thought, oh, that gives me license. I can go out now and get me some more to drink, you know, and I'm going to stay away from dementia. And then what, the, what they'll find out is then all of them will end up with dementia anyway. <laughs> all these scientists, you know, well, I thought this study said. Because, man, man, that's why, Lord, thank you, God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is supposed to give us that discerning and give us that greater understanding and help us to discern what's going on in our world because there's going to be things. That's why the Bible says we can't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Why? It's going to come off real smooth. It's going to come off like, wow, you know, you know, I never thought of it that way. And it's just going to be that just enough of a little bit of lie. That causes people to turn away from the things of God and from the truths of God. Oh, God. That's why, Lord, we need that discerning. God, we need that that greater clarity and sensitivity to the voice of God and to discern what's going on around us. Because people are coming up with all sorts of things, all sorts of doctrines and opinions that you're like, wow. If you're not careful, you can find yourself believing right with them. I was telling Sister Michaela this afternoon, there's a very well-known man out there. He was part of the Pentecostal movement. And uh, uh, he, he penned some very famous songs that Pentecostals still sing to this day. But all of a sudden, he got this new revelation <laughs> that basically, because, you know, God doesn't want anybody to perish in grace, he's like, you know, Lucifer's going to be saved when it's all said and done. Everybody in the world will be saved, including Lucifer. And I thought, wow. But we think, we marvel, we're shocked. Like, how could he believe that? But that's how subtle and insidious things can be if we just give ourselves over to it a little bit. We don't discern the deception that's contained in some of the things that the world is coming up with. And this man has led other people away from truths of God to believe this stuff. So, yep, you can be anything you want because we're all going to go to heaven, including Lucifer too. Well, I guess revelation don't count then. But 
people are trying to say, well, you know, you know, there's just, it's a lot of allegory in the Bible, you know, it's just, just good literary devices, you know, they're just, you know, kind of making symbolism and, you know, it's not, well, you know what, you either believe the Bible is the word of God or not. And if you don't believe it's the word of God, then everything is up for debate. Everything is up for questioning. But see, when we know, okay, nope, the word of God is true. It is the infallible word of God. Thank you, Lord. It's going to give me understanding and revelation so that I can know what's excellent and I, and I can know what is evil and harmful. So again, deception, motives, and being prepared as God's people. If we are not manifesting the principles of God that he has given us to, to grow by, and we're not following through in obedience, Again, this shows that there is some areas of still being on milk. There's a lack of understanding and revelation. Amen. So through our experience, through all the things that we've gone through, you can think collectively over your time and walk with God. Every experience you've had, every trial, every tribulation, you should be able to look back at each one of those experiences that brings forth a change in you because you have a greater understanding of who God is. You have a greater revelation of the principles of God as you've seen them played out and and God has taught you through the things you've gone through. Because again, everything is a test. It's training to teach us what we are to be, how we are to spawn, how we're to talk, how we're to, to, to react to people, how we are to deal with people. You know, again, listening to the message this, this, this morning, you know, from general conference and just reminded that the fruit of the spirit, every one of those God is going to bring through our lives and test us in to see that it's being developed, whether we want to or not. Because if we say, Lord, I want to be godly. I want to live righteously and holy. He's like, okay, be prepared because you will have to go through the necessary things to make sure that these fruit are being manifested in you. And guess what? It's not just going to happen once because at later stages, he's going to say, I need to check your maturity meter. <laughs> How mature are you? Oh, well, you know what? We kind of, we're kind of getting a little bit lax. We need to kind of do a retest and, you know, refresh. And then he allows us to go through something to renew some of that in us. You know, I know I've, I've heard it many, many years being in the church. Don't pray for patience. Don't pray for patience. Well, you don't have to pray for it. He's going to take you through stuff to make you learn long suffering anyway. So, no, you don't have to pray for patience. Just watch out. <laughs> Something's going to happen and you're going to have to learn how to be long suffering. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But see, it's all of our it's about our response. It's about how we react. Oh, Lord. Lord, this trial just seems to be long, God. Thank you, Lord. You're teaching me long suffering. You're teaching me how to endure hardness as a good soldier. You're teaching me how to keep on and keeping on and being faithful, God, even in the midst of all this, Lord. I don't know how long this trial is going to last, but God, I know that when I come out of it, you're going to take everything out of me that shouldn't be there. And what's going to be left is going to be the pure gold. And I'm going to come out, try it in the fire, hallelujah, and be even more strong in you than I was when I came in. And that's how we have to view everything. That's the mindset and the attitude that we have to have. Because if we don't, then we can get caught up. Well, you know, it's just so hard. And, you know, man, you know, can I be happy? And and, 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 there's joy in the Holy Ghost. There's honest to goodness joy in the Holy Ghost. When I was young and I was still a teenager in the church, I didn't really understand that. I never, I didn't really get the whole, you know, joy unspeakable and full of glory. But little did I know years down the road bunch of things happen and then you start realizing yeah thank you for joy thank you for the the stability of joy because you know what i could be not feeling good i could there could be all sorts of things going on but then when i think of the goodness of jesus whoo what it does to the soul oh that joy unspeakable see there's some things you can't learn but through going through things and that's why jesus that's why the lord told israel i've chosen you out of the furnace of affliction Why? Because it's in that furnace of affliction that you learn me, you learn yourself, and you learn who you're supposed to become. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's us being prepared as God's people. That's us being prepared. Okay, Lord, whatever may come. Can you imagine Job probably thinking, man, after what I've just been through, what could come against me now? I done lost everything. Do you think there's something that could come against me that's going to knock me off my feet after that? It's like, oh, yeah. See, and that's what happens. God's like, okay, now you've gone through it. Like, yep, that's not going to sideswipe me now. Oh, I'm going to recognize that. Oh, we know how to do this. Come on, Jesus. We walk in this. We, we're, we keep, we're moving on. You know, the things that would derail us before don't derail us now because we've gotten that greater understanding and revelation of who God is. Hallelujah. 
Thank God for change and transformation. Amen. I was I was listening to a testimony on Sunday night in our Bible study, and 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 Sister Sega was talking about a, a, a lady who had been in the church forty years, but she never read her Bible. But she, and she was she's she was struggling with some things in her in her family and and stuff. And Sister Sega was telling her, "Well, sis, you got to open your word." You got to open your word. You're struggling. You don't know what to do and all this because you haven't been in the word of God to help you. And that's why no matter how long we've got to be in the word, it's the words of eternal life. It's what's going to keep us because the Bible says when everything else passes away, his words will not pass away. I love it when you look at the Hebrew understanding and it says not one dot or tittle. Because in the Hebrew, dots and tills were a part, are a part of the language. There are dots that actually change a character and change it to a different word or different letter. And so he's saying not one ounce, one part of my word, not one comma, period, colon, semicolon, apostrophe will pass away. Because it will always remain true. So, Lord, you know, I'm going to rest in that. I'm going to seek after that because that is what's going to keep me. Amen. Again, Jesus reminds us that we have to come with as the attitude of a little child, receptive, unselfconscious, content with dependence on another's bounty. You know, the first one, being receptive, is often the easiest one. But being unselfconscious, not so much, because so much of the world has caused us to be self-conscious. So we have to, like, root that right back out of us. We got to try to get rid of that so that we can retake on that child attitude like, hey, Lord. I'm unselfconscious. I don't have to be worried, God, because, Lord, as long as I'm pleasing you, to you, who cares what anybody else says? And, and you know what? Sometimes it's easier said than done. But that's one of those qualities and characteristics that we have to keep seeking after. Lord, help me to be unselfconscious, God. Help me to, to keep my mind. Lord, I got to please you. I got to please you, Lord. There's uh, Bishop Chester Wright. He was a former Maryland district superintendent. He, I can't remember what lesson he was teaching, but he said, dead men need no safety net. And when there's times when things challenge me, especially in recent, recent months, and things challenge me and it, it, it wants to kind of eat at me like it did before and try to tear down my confidence, all of, I'm like, dead men need no safety net. Dead men need no safety net. Because if I am dead in Christ, if my flesh is crucified, what do I got to worry about? It's him. If the Holy Ghost is shining through me, yeah, a dead man needs no safety net. You don't rescue a dead man. He's dead. So a dead man needs no safety net. Lord, people are going to do things. Nope, just crucify the flesh. It's not about me. It's not about me because we can take things personal or we can take offense. Lord, because people respond or maybe they act towards us or they lash out at us or they do something. Dead man needs no safety net. Dead man needs no safety net. Lord, because people are going to hurt us. Boy, oh boy, unintentional, intentional, ill-meaning, well-meaning, it's going to happen. You know, things are going to happen. We're going to try to affect our spirits and our minds and our attitudes. Dead man needs no safety net. Your boss comes at you, chewing at you at the job. Dead man needs no safety net. Dead man needs no safety net. <laughs> you know, and I've been telling myself recently, and when I, I'm just like, literally, I'm just saying it all day in my head. And it, I'm like, and then it kind of just, it helps me. It helps me like, okay, don't go there. Don't go to the place that you used to and then get all like, oh man, you know, no good. And, you know, and then you get into this bad place that God then has to kind of get you out of so that you can move forward again. No, 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 no. Dead man needs no safety net. Lord, I'm just, I'm just going to throw myself on the altar. Dead man needs no safety net. And let's keep going, Jesus. Let's keep going, Jesus. Amen. Amen. But these are the kinds of things that God, we, we have to exercise. You know? Yes, Brother Schmidt. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. So true. I have I have personally known individuals where they lost that sacrifice of joy. And as a result, it gave them an excuse to walk away from God. And it took their whole family with them. 
And I'm thinking, you think what you, what you have is better? You think the grass is greener on the other side? No. You just walked back and put the chains on yourself. Thank you, Jesus. That's why a thankful attitude goes a long way. You know, perspective. Okay, Lord, you know, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> but again, easier said than done sometimes. Sometimes you're facing those things and you're like, oh, man, Lord, I got to climb that. He's like, hey, 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 come up this way. When you look down, you realize it's just a molehill. You're thinking, well, oh, God, I don't have your perspective. He's like, okay, come up. Come and get my perspective. <laughs> That, you know, and that's how I think of it. That like my mind goes that way. It's like, okay, Lord. All right. All right. Perspective, God. I need a perspective change today because boy, you know, the way we can see things sometimes. Thank you, Jesus. That again, that patience, that God, he teaches us. He knows how to work with us to help instill these principles and help solidify them in it. But it's, it can't be just, it can't be so shallow. These things of God, these principles can't be so shallow that we can't recall them when we're needed. It's got to be so deep rooted in us that no matter what we're going through, when we, when we get a hold of God, we can reach down and pull out these things and remember. And the Holy Ghost brings to remembrance. That's why we have to, through the repetition and through the reading and through the consistency, it builds a deeper and deeper spiritual bank from which we can draw. It's the difference between a cistern and a well. A cistern relies on groundwater. And if you don't keep the cistern plastered and it starts getting cracks, the water will leach into the ground. But a spring, a well, keeps running deep. Keeps running deep. You always have a supply because it digs deep. And that's where the principles of God have to be. Lord, they got to be deep within me. God, I have, I have to have such a hold of the truths of God that they're deep within me because, man, people are getting swept away left and right. You know, we talk about in the church, you know, the great falling away. Well, I mean, we've seen it probably a number of times. Pandemic was another season of falling away. All the people who, you know, you thought were strong end up not being as strong as you thought. Oh, man, they looked it. But then the people you thought, oh, man, how are they going to make it? They're the ones still in church. Because, again, it's a difference. What, what are we doing? What are we doing in our daily walk with God? Where, how, how deep are the roots? Amen. Reaching down into the spiritual things. And so, amen. I, I'm thankful for what God is doing because, boy, I, you know what? I, I'm like, God, I gotta, I'm got. i grabbing a hold of you. I ain't letting go. <laughs> I am not letting go because it's just too good. He's just too good. You know, they get addicted to all sorts of stuff out there. I want to be addicted to him. I, I, I can't live without him. Can't, I can't go a moment without him. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to stop there tonight. It is birthday night. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I do know it's Sister Bowser's anniversary was this week. Amen. So we will eat cake for her. Amen. I don't know if anybody else out there um, has a birthday or anniversary or family members, but we'll eat cake for them too. <laughs> Oh, amen. See, we're going to eat cake for her. Woohoo! Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. But let's stand tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll sing happy anniversary. A uh, happy anniversary to you. A uh, happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near. Every day of the year, a happy anniversary to you, a happy anniversary to you, and the best year you ever had. Happy happy birthday for your mom. Oh, happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. Oh, happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best year you've ever had. Hallelujah. Let's just pray and, and, and bless the 
cake and dismiss Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for this time, for this Bible study. Thank you for your presence and spirit. Lord, I'm asking God for that you would just continue to touch our minds and our hearts, bringing us revelation and understanding as we seek to grow, to know you more and to know you better. Lord, I'm asking God that you would just again touch Sister Yoshiko, touch her body, bring complete healing, God. Touch Sister Bowser, God. Thank you, Lord God, for the 30th anniversary that her and her husband have celebrated, God, this week. Lord, the birthdays of the many others and God, all that we know. Lord, bless the fellowship and the food, God. Touch everyone, God, who is here tonight, those who watched online. I ask that you protect and keep us as we go home tonight and uh, keep us until we come back together at the appointed time. And Lord, we give you all the honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for all of those who joined us on Facebook and YouTube. Amen. We pray that you will join us in our next service. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.